Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create some really cool and unique space effects quickly and easily. This tutorial is sponsored by John John Games. So if you guys are looking for a channel with plenty of content, gaming and creativity, John's channel is the place to go. You should probably check out some of his socials too and stay up to date with all his latest content. Loads of stuff to see. You can find all kinds of games on there, some Grand Theft Auto stuff, even a couple of tutorials that even I haven't covered. If you fancy being sponsored in one of these tutorials, just like John John Games, all you need to do is click that join button below and become a sponsor. Now, on with the tutorial. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this all in a brand new scene because realistically you're going to want to kind of do it in a brand new scene. I mean you could use what we're going to do for something like a loading or perhaps a quick animation that you can do and we're actually going to use two things to do all of this. We're going to use a particle system and a skybox. Now the way it's done kind of shouldn't work but it does work and it's very peculiar um, but yeah you can create all kinds of cool space effects with this. So let's start by adding in a particle system so let's go to game object effects and particle system and we can see it right there and if i press play hopefully we should see it in the game view there we are so i'm just going to leave it where it is just for now a couple of things i am going to set so i'm going to set it to pre-warm uh, i'm going to set the start speed as let's say one uh, start size as 0 0.1 and uh, we'll have the lifetime as 10 and the duration as 10. So we've changed just a couple of things there, four or five settings. And now this is where the key to all of this comes into play. Let's go to window, let's go to rendering and let's go to lighting settings. And remember I said it's all about the skybox. Well, we're gonna select a skybox, which is technically unsupported. I put technically in air quotes there. Uh, so if we select the little radial button there, and if we select sprites mask, it will give you a warning up here saying, shade of this material does not support skybox rendering. And that is true, it doesn't, it doesn't support it. However, the unique effect that you can actually come up with just by clicking this is very interesting. And we should see it right now. Cool. So if we were to do that, let's duplicate that and let's move it here slightly and let's change the color to red and see what effects we come up with now. Cool. So if we click on scene again and back to game, it does indeed disappear. So this effect in itself isn't strictly recommended in the sense that, oh yeah, you've got to put it in your game. But if you want kind of a, like a cool loading screen or something like zooming through space, then you could do this. And we'll do the zooming through space thing uh, a little later on. Uh, but for now, let's explore a couple of other effects that we can use. So it's all about manipulating that particle system. So if we were to change the shape from, let's say, a cone to a sphere, and let's see what that one looks like now. So once again, it looks really weird and unique but it's all coming from that central point so by that standard what happens if we increase the radius to let's say 10 and let's randomize the direction so two more settings changed and we come up with something completely different once again so let's try changing another setting let's change size over lifetime so let's tick size over lifetime and let's Click on the little graph down here, the curve, and right click, add key. And let's have the first key down the bottom, the middle one at the top, and the last one down the bottom as well. So it kind of starts nothing, fades in full, and then fades out again. So pressing play, you'll end up with a very unique effect once again. You can see it's faded in there, and this one will eventually fade out once it passes its entire lifetime. You can see here where my mouse is, it has indeed faded out. So you have kind of crisscrossing going on here. And you can actually change quite a lot of this just by changing the size of lifetime. So if we had this as two, duration also as two, and I press play, they should last a little less. And you can see just how much. You can see the crisscrossing going on there, but to a much smaller degree. 
Uh, going on to something else here, you can indeed increase the emission rate. So let's say a thousand. And if we press play once again, obviously we see more on the screen and you end up with that unique effect once more. And it is kind of cool. And remember, we had the red before, where well, you can add in different colors to all of this and come up with cool effects all the time. You know, different colors and everything. But remember, we click on scene, back to game, and it kind of resets in that sense. So let's say we want to change the uh, alpha. Let's reduce the alpha to around about 100 and press play once again. You'll see a similar effect. However, you'll notice that it is slightly slightly see-through. So it's worth noting with this, the alpha doesn't strictly work as well as realistically it should do. So whether you have the full alpha or not, isn't really gonna to make too much of a difference at this point. So what about that cool space effect? Well, if we change the randomized direction and set it to zero, and let's set the start lifetime to five, and duration also to five and press play. You'll see you can have that space effect. Cool. And I think it really does depend on um, things like the speed and the size of those actual particles. So for example, if we change the speed to five as well as the uh, lifetime, you'll see you have a bit of a different effect going on. So it really looks like you're kind of traveling through space at that point. And I think it does also come down to things like the max particles and stuff like that. So if we have, let's say, rate over time as 100 and the max particles here, let's set that as 10,000 just to kind of be safe there. But you should see a bit more of a constant flow to all of this. So it looks like you are traveling through space. So this could be cool for like a loading screen or something like that, anything at all, I guess. And remember that you can change how this looks using things like the size over lifetime, color by speed, color over lifetime, all kinds of things like that. So if we go to color over lifetime, select it, you could change this, uh, change any setting you want. Um, same with the rotation, although that's not gonna make too much of a difference unless you attach something like a texture to each of those particles. Uh, but yeah, what I would recommend is if you're interested in creating something kind of cool to this effect, something that shouldn't work, but does work, then I would recommend playing around with some of these particle systems. Just do what you can, change what you want. Like I say, if you want to change it to yellow for some reason, do it and see what kind of effect you can come up with. Again, cool. It's like a look. I, I really feel like that'd be kind of cool for some loading screen in a space game. And the great thing is that if you built this scene and play it, it will actually work. Um, but again, remember that if we are on the game view, we change the scene view, change back, it does kind of reset. But like I say, if you have it in a full build of a game, it will work just as it works in the game view here. So that is just like a sneak peek at something that shouldn't work, but does work, but turns out kind of cool uh, in Unity. It's quirky things like this, which keep me interested and in developing all kinds of different weird effects. Something like that would usually require maybe a shader or something like that, or an advanced particle system working uh, in unison and all kinds of different things. But all this has taken is a quick particle system and a skybox that isn't actually a skybox. So yeah, uh, give that a play. See if you can come up with some kind of really cool effects. Uh, and if you want to know more, leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. And if you feel like sharing your cool effects that you've made, you know, just uh, drop a link to your own YouTube video, something like that. Uh, so hopefully I will see you in another one of my videos and catch you later, guys.